What's going on guys? So a bit of a different intro here. We, we are feeding the ducks. I promise you it's an important episode that we're gonna be getting into. So I'm just about to go for a drive, pick up some essentials. And I thought I'd bring you along with me. I'm gonna be talking about something that is probably so important to many of you right now, which I'll be keen to get into. And uh, we've got Donald and Daisy. So they have moved in, haven't you, yeah, Donald? Daisy's the greedy one. She'll go for it. So a little bit of a uh, feed in. Before, like they've, they've earned so much trust. Like they're so close now before they would be like right over there thinking who is this person, but they have moved in, paying no rent. Go on then. So a little bit of duck feeding. Look how close they're getting. To the point they'll nearly take it out of my hand. I will get B-roll of this. These are the famous ducks that people see on the on the Instagram as well. I'm confident, they, so we've named them. There's Don, there's Don and there's Daisy. She follows me, literally. There you go. We'll get a farm on here soon. Some ducks, goats. What is going on guys? Hope you're all well. So I just wanted to jump on here and just share with you a few things that I, that's been on my mind lately. My parents built, so that's coming along nicely. It's literally weeks away from being finished now, which I'm so, so grateful for. And it's gonna be super exciting to see that come into fruition. So not long at all, but I've been thinking about knowledge and how, how the overconsumption of knowledge is actually affecting our growth. Why could this be affecting us in our day-to-day our -day life? Well, when we have too much knowledge, we tend to get this information overload. And then what this does is it stops us from making good decisions. It stops us from actually taking action, right? I haven't actually driven this in ages. It's so nice to just say it's through a bit of a night drive, but without going off on a tangent there. So overconsumption of knowledge, so back to it. Why is this important? Well, if you have too much water, you drown. If you eat too much food, you become overweight. If you train too much and then overtrain and overtrain and overtrain, well then you get injured. So what does this teach us? It teaches us that too much of one thing or something is not good. It's not, it actually has a negative impact, it has a negative impact on us. And I think that in the, in the trading space as a whole, so this is something I want to talk about more so in the trading space, is that we think that the more knowledge that we have, the more successful we'll be. Now, in theory, that sounds sensible. In theory, that sounds right. You know, if I have more knowledge about, let's say, property development, the more I understand about how the property game works, I'll be non more knowledgeable. So that will equip me with more information so I can make better decisions. Perfect. If I want to be a doctor, if I have more knowledge, you know, I assume if you, if you want to be a doctor, I should hope that you've got more knowledge. But you want to be very knowledgeable in your field so then you can use that in application. But with trading, it's very different. Why is that? And it's hard for people to understand. So what we tend to do is that we think, and I, I used to do this as well, the more knowledge I have, the better trader I'll be. Boy, was I wrong. The more, the more knowledge I had, the more confused I was. The more simple I kept it, the better trader that I became. And what we'd use, we use this statement as an excuse that if I just have a bit more knowledge and I understand more about this, this will actually be better for me. In theory, it makes sense. But in practicality, no. You take, you know, a hundred traders or a thousand traders, give them more knowledge, give them more information, what will it do? It will give them more hesitation and a lack of success. Why? Because they'll be overwhelmed. This, it's a very, very small percentage of people that can take on so much knowledge, dissect that in the moment when it counts, when they're trading, and not let it influence their decisions. Not let some fundamental that they learned about influence something so simple as like, it's just a pullback and just take the trade that meets your plan. But like they can't comprehend that because now they know about order flow. Now they know about zones. Now they know about Fibonacci. Now they know about something else and then a pattern and then support and resistance. Now they know about some fundamental. Then they've got news coming out. You start to understand all this thing. You can talk to someone. They're a very knowledgeable trader, but not a very successful one. But in life in general, the more knowledge we have is good. But in trading, it's a game of probabilities. You're not counting cards, this is not, it's not like that. It's about being able to make good decisions, be disciplined, follow processes, stick to trading plans. It's not the same as normal life. And I think this is where we get it confused. So I thought I would talk about this because 
if you don't know, like you don't know. So you'll just say these things that makes you feel, feel good and you'll think, well, I'm just learning more. So surely if I learn more, they can't be bad, surely not. However, like I said, you take 100 people, take 1,000 people, give them more knowledge, what will happen? It won't increase their results, it will go the other way. And we've seen this, you know, the data's there for a reason. Otherwise, if, if it was always about knowledge, well, then surely you just get the most intelligent people that know the most about the market and they would be the best traders. Well, why aren't they then? Because, because we know that it's not about that. So we already have the numbers, we already have the data. So what I want you to think about is that, why do you want to be a more knowledgeable trader? There's nothing wrong with knowing more about the market. Of course, you need to evolve, you need to expand. Yeah, that's fine. But how long have you given it? How much time have you given how you're learning? I always gave myself a very, very long period of time and I've always learned loads of different things. But I understood the difference between when I was just getting disappointed and frustrated that I didn't get the results yet versus, right, I, I need to know a little bit more about this or I, I feel like I've got a lack of clarity on that. I understood how to do that. Where in this day and age, you've got a very TikTok mindset and some of it's not your fault. It, it really isn't, but some of it is your fault, right? So you have to understand the difference when you're taking ownership because the issue with going and the, the problem with going from a system to a system and just acquiring more knowledge is that you train your mind that when things get difficult and things get tough that you go do something new right imagine how dangerous that is it's a very very slippery slope when things get difficult and when things get tough just go and do something new because you want the dopamine hit of feeling like you're doing something that is progressive but in actuality you're just not followed through in the system. You're not giving it enough time. You're not giving it enough patience. And I, I've been there and I've done that before where I've, I've not given something enough time that it deserves. And then when I did do that, well, guess what? I broke through. Because you have to understand most systems work. They have an edge. When people go into this blame mindset of like, yeah, just I don't feel like it's working anymore. Well, why are so many other people doing it? Right? It's like me taking a tennis racket and going, this tennis racket doesn't work. Well, why can Federer take that same tennis racket and then go and play, play a set with it? Why can he do that, right? Because he knows how to use the resource. It's like saying this basketball doesn't work, this football doesn't work, this badminton racket doesn't work. Of course it works, it all works. It's you that doesn't work. And I want this to be maybe the wake up call that you need, right? I wish I had these wake up calls earlier on in my journey where I was so fueled into these excuses what would I do I'd go and find other people with the same BS excuses and low vibrational mindset that they have and I would go yeah maybe I need to do this and then you've got all these negative circle and negative people agreeing with each other that have not achieved success in themselves right who are you listening to listen to people that have been in the position that you wish to be or are in the position and doing what you want to do it's that simple anyone else don't listen to them Right, I'm not gonna give you fitness advice. I'm not a fitness instructor. I'm not 10% body fat, I've not gone through it. So I'm not gonna start giving you fitness advice. And I'm not gonna take fitness advice from someone who's not in the shape and has done it and has got people in shape as well. So it's about understanding that, look, I can't transfer something that I'm not experiencing myself. If I can't cook, I can't teach you how to cook. If I can't swim, I can't teach you how to swim. If I can't play tennis, I can't teach you how to play tennis. And if I can't trade, I can't teach you how to trade. It's very, very simple. Right, I can't transfer anything to you that I'm not experiencing myself. So when it comes to things like excuses that we hear all day long, right, and believe you me, I've, I've heard of so many variations of them. At the core, I promise you this, if you start to learn to take extreme ownership as to where you are in your journey, it will be better for you. Right, stop. There's people that have come to me before and they start blaming other systems that they were at. It's got nothing to do with the system. The system was probably quite great. Right? You just didn't work at it. You gave up and thought, I've given it six months and now I'm going to go check out Falcon, for example. Well, you didn't give the other thing enough time. It's not about that Falcon is the only way to trade. I hope that's not the point that you think that I'm making here. The point that I'm making is that don't allow your excuses and your insecurities to be clouded by saying these statements as you just want more knowledge because if that was the case we already have the data that doesn't make you successful what does make you successful is learning how to build good habits being in the flow zone being in that optimal flow state and just making consistent good decisions and if you make consistently good decisions enough 
you miraculously get good results. Funny that, right? So I hope you actually took some value from this episode, this, this message. I'm really big on this message because there's so many people that I've seen, and forget just trading, and just so many areas. Like we, we grow up thinking that the more knowledge, 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 knowledge that we have, it will make us more successful. So my question to you is that if you wanna be more successful in life, if that is the goal, then do what successful people do. Successful people like mimic what they do. They're not looking for overcomplicated systems. Even if you study people like Warren Buffett, if you actually look at what he does, it, the formula is very simple. Just no one wants to do it. Like a lot of things are simple. There's a lot of fitness regimes that are very simple. Just People just don't want to do it. There's lots of simple business advice, even like financial advice. I can't give you financial advice. However, like simple things about understanding how to deal with your money, having the right ratios. I'll probably do this in a later episode, you know, having the right ratios in place. Even just learning how to manage your finances, it's not some complicated algorithm. Learn what percentage you want to invest, learn what percentage you want to have as your spending money, your free money that you just decide to reward yourself with. Learn how to have a certain ratio of what your outgoings are. Once you figure that system out, it's very simple and you can you can start to grow wealth. Yet, why don't people do it? They don't have the knowledge. They, they think that one day they'll find this complicated thing or they'll be at a certain place and then it will happen. The reality is you just start with very simple things. Overconsumption of everything will lead you to procrastinate, hesitate, go around in circles and actually push the goal that you want to achieve in the first place even further away. So just stick with something, develop a backbone. And when you do that, funny enough, good things happen. I'm about to get some essentials and gonna head back. We've got a long night film. It's been a very, very productive day. Um, the ducks will probably still be hungry when I get back. Uh, they absolutely love it. I'm, I'm loving having this uh, atmosphere that we have in the, the property at the moment. We'll probably get some more. Who knows, we'll probably get a goat, you name it. But catch you next episode and I will see you all soon.